Welcome back to Booze and the Rocks. My name is David Edwards. And you know what? Today we're going to look at Jeffrey Morgenthaler's version of the French 75. But how good is it, really? Let's find out. Now this cocktail was originally called the 75, and you see it printed in the 1922 edition of Harry's ABCs of Mixing Cocktails. Now, of course, that was written by Harry McElhone. But that same year, Robert Vermeer wrote a cocktail book called Cocktails and How to Make Them, and he quotes McElhone as being the actual creator of the cocktail. But this cocktail didn't become really popular until the Savoy Cocktail Book from 1930. That was written by Harry Craddock. Now, if you follow up your history a little bit longer, in the 90s, the cocktail changed and they put it in a champagne flute and they changed the way they make it. So while I was watching small screen drinks, and I'll put a link down below, I saw an interview with Jeffrey Morgenthaler and he explained about how he didn't get it or understand the construction and why it was made that way until he got his hands on a copy of the Savoy Cocktail Book. And I'll put a link to the Savoy Cocktail Book down below if you're interested in purchasing a copy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Jeffrey Morgenthaler's recipe for this because I think it works out to being the perfect version of the French 75. So let's get into it. First, we need our shaking glass or your tin or whatever you choose to use. The first piece that we're going to use is whatever gin that you're using. In this case, I'm using Devil's Keep Distillery Gin, and this comes from New Brunswick. And this was given to me by one of my viewers named Dan. Dan, thank you very much. Now we need one ounce or 30 milliliters. The next thing that we need is a little bit of a simple syrup, but what we're going to use is a rich simple syrup. Now, rich simple syrup is a two to one ratio. So two parts sugar, two parts water. And again, like a regular simple syrup, you heat it up until it goes clear, just to the edge of boiling, take it off, decant it into your bottle and let it cool before using it. And we're going to use half an ounce or 15 milliliters. The next ingredient we're going to use is a lemon. And what we're going to do is we're gonna cut this in half and we're gonna use one ounce of lemon juice. One ounce, of course, works out to 30 milliliters if I can figure out how to squeeze a lemon. And make sure you hold on to your rinds because you can use those to make uh, an oleosaccharum if you want, okay? So the next step in this is to take the bigger part of your shaker tin and you're going to fill it halfway. Only halfway. And what we're doing is we're shaking this until it's incorporated and until it becomes very cold. Looking good. Smells nice and ginny with lemon. So it's very much like a Tom Collins. However, what we're doing is we're taking away the uh, seltzer water that you would use in a Tom Collins and we're adding a champagne. Or in this case, I'm using a Frisione sparkling wine. And rather than pouring this directly into the glass, what we need is two ounces. Now, Jeffrey Morgenthaler suggests Pouring it into your jigger first. Well, not quite that way, of course. But what you want to do is you want to get your two ounces in here first. And this way, you're going to keep as many of the bubbles as possible. And we're going to put this directly into the uh, cocktail shaker. As soon as I figure out how to make this look right. And we're going to pour this in gently. So you just want to gently pour this in. Because we want to keep as much of the uh, bubbles as we can. So now that we've done that, we'll take our Collins glass and we're going to add a bunch of ice. And that original Savoy's cocktail book says over cracked ice, which I'm not going to crack because I've got some small ice, and then to pour it all over. And when you do this, you actually get everything all at once and it gives the champagne a chance to mix. And now we're just going to garnish this. 
We are going to garnish this with a lemon twist. So take your white peeler, give yourself a nice long swath, and I'm just going to do that directly over the glass. I'm going to give it a little bit of an express, just so that we get the lemon oils on there. And now I'm going to make it look pretty. You know, just sort of clean up the edges a little bit, just for my presentation's sake, because, you know, I want it to look nice. Now, you don't have to garnish it if you don't want to. Oh, whatever, it's up to you. And it's your drink. So we'll put that right there. Look at that. A bubbly Tom Collins. No, actually, it's the French 75. And you know what? It smells really good from here. Let's try it out. So the first things you get are the hints of the lemon. Those citrus notes directly from the lemon peel itself. Let's try it. Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it tastes so much better than a Tom Collins, in my opinion. I think you'll like this. Uh, oh, two ounces of the uh, good stuff, whatever you choose to use. You could use a Brut, uh, it's a little bit drier. You could use something a little bit sweeter. Again, depending on your personal taste. Mm. <clears throat> that is an excellent cocktail, oh yeah. You could knock a few of those back on a, a warm day or with a nice meal. This is the French 75. If this is your first time to my channel, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that thumbs up notification. And if you don't like this cocktail, I'm sorry, but it's really good, at least to me, not my opinion. And we'll see you next time. Now, during the same year, Vermeer put out... Now, in the same year, Vermeer wrote his... Take 25. I can't get through the damn history. <laughs>